Taylor and this is a recap of the Turbo Velo Tuesday Night Crit from June 25th, 2024. So right at the start, that's my brother in front of me. And normally we start more toward the back of the pack, but this time we found ourselves at the front for no apparent reason. And uh, I think my brother got a little excited and there was nobody in front of him to set the pace, so he took off a little quick. I wanted to stay on his wheel, be in his draft, so I thought this was a little fast, but I just grabbed onto the wheel and was going to see where it took us. The wind, as per usual, is coming out of the south, so we're going into the wind right here. I try to have a little uh, conversation with him, and around this time we both realized that the pack isn't on our wheel, as we kind of expected it would be. All the recent races have taken off really fast at the start, so we thought everyone would be behind us, but they weren't this time around. So Rusty eases up a little bit, and uh, we wait for the pack to catch up. Now I'm pretty sure we couldn't stay off the front the whole race. In fact, I'm certain the group would eventually catch us, but I'm surprised it took this long for the group to catch up and really start trying to bring us back. You can see in the rear view that they're starting to roll up on us, but they're not just surging past us. We're still in the front. They're still happy to let Rusty do the work and push through the wind for everybody. And they're just hanging back, trying to catch up. And so, you know, Rusty, I think maybe went a little too hard and maybe burned himself out a little bit. But there on the left going around us, that's AJ from Reunion. And he pushes to try to get in front of us and nobody else from the group goes with him. So he just goes off the front. And here we are at the end of the first lap. We did pretty good. 244 is pretty good lap time for not being with the group. But AJ, you know, he's several seconds in front of us at this point. So interesting play by him there. Here's the point where the group starts to go around us. And I think both Rusty and I made an error here, which is that we were waiting for an opportunity to like slot in to the group. But there isn't one of those and they're going faster than us. And now we're getting swarmed by everybody and we're falling all the way back to the back of the group. So we were in the front, well, second, and we're all the way at the back now. You can see there's nobody left behind me. And we have to surge to catch on to the back because they're going so much faster than us. In retrospect, what I think we should have done is, as soon as people started going around us, we should have tried to slot in, like actually moved over, and even if there isn't a spot for us, just hang out next to another rider and pace with them, and eventually we'll get mixed back in with the group. So, not the greatest play from us there, and you can see AJ came off the front and he picked up on the very back with us, so kind of weird, all the three people that were at the front of the race just a moment ago are now at the back. At this point, it's back to my normal strategy of assume I'm the weakest rider in the field, try to sit in the middle, and don't work too hard. That was my plan last week and the week before. We'll see how well I stick to it this time around. But this week, I wanted to talk about some marginal gains that I made. So I've been riding a Canyon Grizzle gravel bike for these, which is not the best thing for road racing, but gets the job done. And I was riding it just as it came from Canyon. But Recently, I made two changes, which are I swapped the wheels out for a pair of uh, slightly deeper 60 millimeter Super Team carbon wheels, and I swapped the tires for uh, Continental GP5000 STRs, although in this race I don't actually run them tubeless, I've got tubes in there. But those two changes, so new wheels and new tires, and also I shaved my legs. So I wanted to try to get as many easy marginal gains as I could because I don't have as much time recently to train. And my general thought process is that between the bike and me, I'm the weak link. I'm the thing that needs work. <laughs> I need to train more. But if I can get some gains from spending a little bit of money on wheels and shaving my legs, which is basically free, then that's good. That'll probably help me be a little bit more competitive. So we'll see how that pans out for me in this race, but just keep that in mind as you're watching the footage. If you watched last week's video, you may be watching this and thinking, Taylor, what the heck are you doing? You're making the exact same mistake again. You are trying to bridge from the back group to the front group, and you're in no man's land. It's not going well. What are you doing? I was thinking that too while I was writing here, but it was actually a different situation this week. So the group is in front of me, and what's behind me isn't really a group. It's just the stragglers. And so for me, I am trying to catch up to the group so that I can still be in this race. 
And granted, I'm not doing a great job of that. Clearly, there's a huge gap and I'm not making strides to close it down. But my thought process was I need to push to try to catch on to this group. Otherwise, it's just back to time trial for me. And, you know, worst case, I just do the time trial, which I'm ready to do anyway. But I think this is different from last week because I didn't surge off the front of a group to try to catch a group in front of me. I tried to avoid being dropped off the back of the race. Unfortunately for me, it didn't work out. I spent the majority of the lap at or near my max heart rate, pushing as hard as I could to try to catch on to the group, but the group just got further away from me. You can see there's one straggler in front of me, but the group is long gone. And I'm just burned out, and so I'll take a little bit to kind of recover here and then settle into doing a time trial for the rest of this which honestly turned out pretty good for me because I got to do a close to apples to apples comparison with the new wheels, new tires, and the shaved legs versus last week because the weather was about the same. My training obviously hasn't changed. I'm in the same shape that I was a week ago. And uh, if I time trial, then I can see, okay, how did I do last week? And let's compare that to how I did this week. And that'll be how much I gained from those three improvements or three changes. Unfortunately, I did all three at the same time, so I can't tell you, you know, oh, the tires were the best versus the wheels, or shaving my legs was what made it, and the wheels didn't matter at all. But it'll still be interesting to see how it stacks up to the week before. And actually, right here, I'm drafting behind this play try rider. He's going a little bit slower than I wanted to, but I wanted to draft him through the upwind section and then go in front of him once we round the corner, just so that I can get a little bit of a breather after working super hard on the lap before to catch the group, which I failed to do. So that was tactical. I don't know if it really matters, but there you go. And there are some other dropped riders that I'll be passing through this lap and others, but for the most part, I didn't sit in anybody's draft or sit on anybody's wheel. I was, for the most part, by myself. So maybe that lap didn't count because I spent a little bit of time drafting, but you can see that I finished in 2 minutes 50 seconds, which compares very favorably to what I was doing last week, which was around 3 minutes 5 seconds. And so that's 15 seconds better. I'd have to work out, you know, the actual averages, but just at a gut level check, this is me doing basically the same effort on the same course with similar conditions and only a week apart. And those three changes of new wheels, new tires, and shaving my legs bought me 15 seconds on about three minutes, which is huge. I mean, I didn't expect it to be that big of an impact. I wasn't watching the lap times as I was going around. You know, it wasn't like pushing to hit a certain lap time. So this was just same relative effort as last week and managed to go 10 or 15 seconds faster per lap, which was phenomenal. So big fan of these easy wins, you know, a lot easier to shave your legs than it is to do the amount of training necessary to get 10 seconds faster per lap. I don't think anything too exciting happens for the rest of this race, so I'm just going to show clips near the start finish so you can see the lap timers to see that this 250 time I had, or 254 on this lap, wasn't a fluke. I can do that over and over again throughout the race with this new equipment. One lap later, going through the start finish, right around 2.54, almost the exact same time as the previous lap, and again, 10 seconds faster than the week before. Okay, so one interesting thing happened, actually, which is that I get passed by the lead pack of three riders. Uh, so they go past me pretty quick there, and uh, they're far in front of the rest of the group, so they're, they've got a good gap. Another lap down for me, this one a couple seconds slower at 2 minutes 56, but still pretty consistent. And one more lap, once again at 2.56, so uh, consistent but slower. A couple laps ago, the lead group of three riders went past me, and just now, the rest of the peloton is passing me, so that gives you a hint as to how far ahead that lead group was. They had just an enormous gap from the rest of the field. And I thought here about trying to latch on to the wheel of this group, but you know, it's toward the end of the race. I didn't want to be mixed up in the field sprint at the end. So I thought, well, okay, if I happen to hang with them, that's great, but I'm not gonna like make an effort to catch on anybody's wheel here. And I do manage to grab onto a wheel, finish a lap in about 2.57, so keeping that consistency. 
and this is the last lap for me and uh, just trying to save a little bit for you know the quote unquote sprint at the finish and we'll see how that goes so I tried not to go too soon here, which I've done before, but right there before the final turn, crank it up to about 600 watts and just keep pushing as hard as I can until I cross the finish line. My goal is basically to feel like I'm gonna throw up once I cross the line, and I certainly did this time around, so mission accomplished. But I had a fun time racing out here today, and I was very happy with my changes in equipment having such a big impact on my lap times. Obviously, it didn't really impact my, you know, I didn't place any better as a result, but certainly feels good to gain 15, 10 or 15 seconds on a three minute lap. It's great. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.